Hello and welcome to Canadian SME Small Business Podcast. This is your host, Kripa Anand. You're listening to She and Success, where we spotlight the women entrepreneurs making waves in today's business landscape. In this series, we highlight the stories and journeys of inspiring women who are leading the way in business, offering valuable insights to help others start and grow their own ventures. In an era of accelerating technological change, preparing young Canadians for the new economy, especially in STEM fields is paramount. Addressing systematic barriers and ensuring equitable access to cutting-edge skills is vital for Canada's global competitiveness and prosperity. Joining us today is Jennifer Flanagan, co-founder, president, and CEO of Actua. For over 25 years, Jennifer has been an extraordinary force in redefining STEM education in Canada, empowering millions of young minds. She is one of Canada's leading experts in technology equity, STEM education, and diversity and inclusion, driving a national organization that engages 500,000 youth annually, with a strong focus on those historically excluded from STEM. So before further ado, let's welcome her. Jennifer, welcome to the podcast. How are you doing today? I'm great. Thank you. It's nice to be here. It's our pleasure. Now, Jennifer, Actua is at the forefront of, you know, understanding AI skill development among Canadian youth. Your recent Ready for AI report highlighted some fascinating findings. So from your perspective, what's driving the perception gap between youth's confidence in AI skills and educators' concerns? And go ahead and explain us why are AI skills essential for youth's career development in Canada's economic future? So Actua set out with this survey to get a better understanding of where youth stood in terms of their own perceptions about their AI skills. So mm-hmm. how, how confident do they feel? How prepared do they feel? And conversely, uh, where do parents and educators stand? So we know that AI skills are going to underpin our economy. They already have become... Um, you know, almost essential for for many, many jobs. In the future, that's only going to increase. Every single job will will require an integration at some level of AI skills. Um, And so in this this study, we found a a significant difference between how youth were perceived, well, what they believed their effectiveness and responsibility was around AI skills, um, and then their teachers. So youth, 72% of youth felt that they were using AI confidently or responsibly and ethically, and only 38% of teachers uh, felt the same. So that gap is coming from the fact that we just aren't, we haven't caught up yet to providing the kind of coaching guidance training that youth need to actually uh, understand AI. So they're using AI and that's getting confused with understanding AI. And that's where we want to sort of, you know, intervene with the the education programs that we uh, are in the process of developing. Wow, that's a very crucial insight, Jennifer. And it's also more about the mindset shift, right? More than just learning a new skill. Uh, I think bridging that perception gap and, you know, emphasizing the undeniable importance of AI literacy are clearly, you know, vital for Canada's next generation. Now, let's explore the broader, uh, you know, national imperative for Canada to accelerate its AI skill building efforts. Uh, Jennifer, as AI, you know, advances rapidly, the stakes for Canada's global competitiveness are incredibly high. Mm -hmm. You advocate for Canada to, you know, play catch up with AI skill building to ensure global competitiveness. How urgent is it for Canada to significantly invest in AI skill building for, you know, future global competitiveness? And what specific risks do we face if, you know, do not prioritize this national effort in a way? We know that no advanced economy in the world is going to be able to compete unless they have an AI literate society. Uh Uh, And and Canada is no different. And right now, the OECD just recently launched uh, or released um, a a ranking of countries. And Canada ranks incredibly low. I believe it was 43 out of four or out of maybe 50 countries in terms of the levels of AI literacy. So we want to compete. We have long been a global leader in Mm -hmm. AI, but what we haven't done is we haven't, we haven't kept up with the kind of training and talent building that we need to make sure that we continue to be a leader in AI. And those standings are sort of pointing to that. So we need to make sure that we're acting now to get youth, you know, engaged in, in building 
um, the kind of skills that they're going to need to use this technology effectively, intelligently. We want them using it in a way that actually enhances the outputs, right? Not just, you know, we're not using it as a tool or as a replacement for doing the hard work, but that right. we're actually enhancing the end results. Um, and ultimately, we want an AI literate society. So an a, a society where people understand when to use AI, when to let AI do the heavy lifting, and when right. it needs that kind of human um, component. Touch. Yeah. Well, wow, that's, you know, a very powerful call to action, you know, I think underscoring the critical national imperative for robust AI skill development. Okay. Uh, Jennifer, let's now address some of the challenges in AI education, particularly unit you know, concerns from parents and educators and how social media plays a role. So, you know, uh, firstly, the integration of AI into education brings both opportunities and concerns, especially mm -hmm. as you know, youth increasingly interacts with it through platforms like social media. So what concerns, according to you, do parents and educators have about youth using AI, uh, especially regarding issues like cheating? And how does, you know, Actua equip them the tools to guide youth effectively, particularly amid calls to ban AI in schools? What's your take on it? So, the biggest concerns that that teachers uh, and and parents told us in the national survey that we did is uh, around safety. So mm -hmm. so how safe this is in terms of youth getting misinformation, and um, around shortcutting learning. So on the safety issue, that's a really big concern because we know that although ninety percent of youth are using AI in Canada today, the vast majority of them are learning how to do that through social media. And if they do not have the skills yet to uh, understand misinformation, to be able to identify it, to understand, you know, fact from fiction, they might be yeah. getting information that could could potentially harm them if they're asking questions about things like health or about, you know, any treating it sort of more like an expert than it than it should be. Right. Um, and then conversely, on the other side, in terms of shortcutting learning, we know AI can be used to shortcut learning. Um, and that's why we're driving so hard with our AI Ready program to, again, give kids the skills to understand the difference between using it to enhance and using it to cheat, using it to replace. Nice. Um, so we, you know, the programs that we're going to offer to youth are going to be very hands on. They're going to involve their parents and their teachers in building the kind of skills that we need to use this technology effectively and to really drive innovation. Wow, that's a very practical and nuanced perspective. I think recognizing the genuine concerns while also emphasizing the needs for constructing engagement is the way to go, right? Mm -hmm. Now, Jennifer, Actua is actively working to bridge the AI skills gap with comprehensive initiatives like your, your AI Ready project. Uh, so can you go ahead and explain how Actua's AI Ready project in collaboration with Microsoft Canada and the CanCode 4.0 program supports youth educators and parents in preparing for an AI-driven future? Uh, the reason that I love this, uh, the way that we've put together the AI Ready program yeah. is because we're involving not only Actua as an education organization, but partners like Microsoft and the federal government. So this is a huge issue for our economy. If we do not get youth the skills that they need in AI, we are going to fall behind on every measure of global competitiveness. And so having government and private sector companies and education organizations come together to make sure that we are delivering programs that are going to meet the need of the future workforce is um, is absolutely essential. So we're going to focus on giving youth the kind of experiences that they need to both understand how AI works, to mm -hmm. understand things like privacy and, and bias, but also to use it in ways that um, are really creative and that, you know, really harness the power of AI to solve some of the big challenges that we continue to be plagued by. So we're going to ask kids, you know, what problems they care about, how they want to show up in the world, and we're going to show them how AI can help them do that. Wow. So you'll just paint a beautiful picture in front of the kids and leave it up to them, right? That's right. 
Wow, that sounds like a truly impactful and you know wide-reaching initiative, Jennifer, designed to empower all key stakeholders in youth AI development. Finally, let's discuss AI's you know broader impact on the workplace and the future talent pipeline, including advices for SMEs. Now, uh, I want to ask you this: as an employer yourself, what's your approach to using AI at work within Actua? And for you know small and medium-sized businesses listening, what key t- takeaways you know should they keep in mind about AI? AI's impact on their future operations and, you know, the talent pipeline for the new economy? Mm -hmm. I mean, as an employer, um, I think it's really important, especially because ACT was in the the space of teaching youth about AI, that we Mm -hmm. as a business actually use the same technology to help with our own productivity. So that's that's where we are. As an employer, I really uh, want employees to use AI tools um, to boost their productivity when it makes sense to do that. So um, my expectation is that they would take those outputs and, you know, make it their own to refine it, to fact check it. Uh, But we're in a in in a phase right now at Actual where we're experimenting with the technology and how it can be used to help people in their jobs. Um, So not to replace them, because so much of what we do is so is so human driven um, but to really enable us to to automate some of the tasks that might be taking longer. Again, it's all the things we want to reflect in youth, you know, understanding when AI should be doing the heavy lifting. That's how we want to show up in, in, in our business use. And I encourage every business to look at and experiment with ways that AI could do that for them. There's so many opportunities here to actually give us our time back um, so that we can spend it on, you know, building other areas of the companies. That's incredibly valuable insight, Jennifer, offering, you know, both an employer's perspective and actionable takeaways for SMEs. Uh, Now, before we let you go, if there's one piece of core final advice that you have for our listeners today, something that you want them to take away from this entire episode today, what would it be and why? Okay, it's two things. (laughs) One is get in there and experiment with this technology, like learn about what it could do for you help, you know, help yourself in terms of uh, advancing this, because it's not, Mm -hmm. there's not going to be a stop to this, you know, it's, it's racing full steam ahead. And then I would say that the vast majority of us, whether we have our own kids, or you have kids in your life that you care about, I I think it's critically important that we engage them in conversations about AI use, how are they using it? What do they think about it? How are they viewing it? Um, Because that's going to, that's going to form the very near future of our workforce. Well, that's a very powerful and essential message, Jennifer. It has been a pleasure having you on the podcast. Thank you so much for sharing your expertise and vision with us. My pleasure. Thanks for having me. All right. That was an insightful conversation with Jennifer Flanarikin, co-founder, president and CEO of Actua on youth AI skill development, Canada's global competitiveness in AI, challenges in AI education and Actua's comprehensive programs. Thank you so much for tuning in to the Canadian SME Small Business Podcast. We appreciate your continued support. Also, be sure to subscribe to our podcast for more expert insights and resources that can help your business thrive. Also, don't forget to visit our website, Canadian SME. And lastly, a very special thank you to our podcast partners, RBC, UPS, A1 Global College, and Google for their ongoing commitments to empowering SMEs. Until next time, keep innovating and striving for success, and we'll see you in the next episode. Kripa Anand, signing off.